Welcome to another episode of Light in Darkness. Again, this is Flaming Sword Ministries, and my name is. I'm your host. Yeah, I'm your host. <laughs> I am your day. Ajibuye. And I have a guest here with us, a young lady. Her name is Shinito Fode. That's all right. Food day. Food day. Okay, food day. Right. How you doing? I'm great. Thank you for asking. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a very boring person. I'm um, ask you for that. Just tell us about yourself. <laughs> okay, so my name is Shayna Fode. I'm 19. I go to the University of Texas at Arlington and I study journalism. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. It's fun. Hmm. All right. So, well, before I even go deeper, so you say you study journalism. Yes. Why journalism? Well, my intention is to study law. Hmm. Okay. Human rights law. But uh, journalism came to me because, number one, you can't study law as a first degree here, unfortunately. Right, right. So you have to do something first. So I decided to choose journalism because I like facts. I like knowing things. I like knowing things are going to happen. I like I like being in the know of everything. So I like being the one that's going to tell people news. Okay. And so and I like being behind the scenes too. Like I, I I standing in front of the camera is very weird for me. But I like you know writing. I like like and I do nonfiction mostly. So I like okay. facts. I like news. I like all the stuff. So okay. I decided to choose communication and journalism on that is because I felt like journalism is like a means of letting people know what's going on in the world in a way that books don't right because talking especially this generation now seeing is believing mm. and so they want to see that someone is saying it for them to believe it because people don't like to read now and so i chose journalism because i want people to know about so many different things and i want them to know it through me mm. okay through you all right so let me ask um when did you become truly vernicated and um yeah, when did you become truly born again? So, there are many stages to that question. Yeah, that's my, why I said truly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so my okay. first encounter with God okay. was in 2008. Okay. And that was when my mom took me to the Fountain of Life Church mm -hmm. in, I don't know where, Ilupoju. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that was the first time I had ever gone to a church where communion was for everyone. Because mm -hmm. I went to Methodist, so communion was like... And yeah, like sixteen or seventeen. So that was my first encounter with like a like a church that like everyone is present, everyone is like worshiping God with the same energy. Mm -hmm. And so two thousand and eight, it was like okay, I see what we're doing, I see who God is. I, Cause I was like I was a fan of God, but I wasn't a follower. Hmm. Okay. You know, like I was like okay, I I knew who God was. Right. I knew that okay, there's someone there that's watching everyone, mm -hmm. but I didn't know who God was in the sense that I never encountered him. I had never known who he, who he truly was. I had never known there was anything like miracles. I'd never seen miracles happen. Yeah. I'd never heard of testimonies. I was just wow. going to church because they were taking me to church. church. Wow. And so 2008 came. I was like, okay. So I gave my life to Christ. There was one day, I think April 12th or something like that. Yeah. My grandpa's birthday. I was like, okay. I gave my life to Christ. I didn't know what that meant. They shot called altar call. My mom said, go, go, go. So I went. Oh, and then, <laughs> and then 2016, when I came to this country, we were looking for a church to go to. And so we went to Empowerment Center, where I go to right now. Mm. And my life changed in 2016. I don't know. It just turned around in so many different ways. I became very, very aware mm. that God existed. I became very, very aware that you know what? The spiritual drives the physical. That's it's right. not just. It's not just. I'm not just. The fact that I'm waking up and sleeping every day is not really just me. Mm -mm. It's not just my parents. That's right. It wasn't just. And it wasn't as if I was like there. Like I was spiritually there. I was aware. I was like, okay, you know what? I know miracles happen. I know all that happens. But then I realized that God. First of all, God is real. God is really real and he's working in mysterious ways like right. in ways that you never understand. So 2016 when 2017 came, I left God completely. I was like, you know what? I can't do this again. Uh, I know how so I was going to church. <laughs> I was praising my hand. I was praising God, right. but at the back, nothing. Mm. I wasn't doing anything. I was going to work and so I had a group of friends and it always stands from there. Mm. So I had a group of friends and those friends just messed me up. Mm. 
Like 2017 till date has been my worst year. I can truly say it has been my worst year. It messed me up completely. Like I wasn't where I was supposed to be. I was in school, but I wasn't in school. I was skipping classes like mm. it was nobody's business. Stop, stop. Yeah, <laughs> I was skipping classes. <laughs> right. Like I, they would ask me, how was how was school? Oh, was school was school. fine. School was great. <laughs> I I got to work because I never failed any class. Can you imagine? Like the lowest grade I ever got was a C. Uh -huh. And like that C, to be honest, I don't know how I got it, but I got it. <laughs> and so. 2018 came, I was like, you know what, I need to get right with God. And I prayed this particular prayer. I said, God, you know what, take away distractions from my life. Hmm. That's, a, that's a deep prayer. And when I was praying it, I was praying. I don't know, like, what was the distraction there? I have, maybe it's my phone, they will see it for me. Okay. So, uh, and then 2018, May, the last day of school, hmm. I went out with my friends on a Friday. On a Sunday, they had removed me from all the group chats. Mm -hmm. They had removed my name. They claimed that I was using them for money. Mm -hmm. That I was I was not their friend. I was only their friend because they were buying me stuff. We worked together. We earned money together. I met them at work. So wait, wait, wait. you prayed the prayer on the Friday? No, no, no. I prayed the prayer to God, like December thirty first. Was one of my like wish lists. Like God, two thousand eighteen. Uh -huh. I want to be right with God. Uh -huh. And then May came. I cried. I was like. These were my only friends in America. Like I didn't know anybody else. And they so, didn't tell you. They just removed. They just removed me. They, mm -hmm. they said no. We're not. We're not talking to you again. And then a week after, my mommy just called me and said, "You know when you were praying that prayer, I was just laughing at you." <laughs> <laughs> and so she was like, "You see, God mm -hmm. works in mysterious ways." Mm -hmm. And so from then, I was like, "You know what? Prayer is good. Prayer is real. Let's continue the prayer." And so from then, I started going to church but actually listening in church like mm -hmm. you know you go to church but you're not in church right oh yeah mm -hmm. i was actually present in church i could honestly say that after that whole fiasco with my friends i became so present in god's word that there's nothing now that can take me away from it mm -hmm. and i'm just 19 and, and when people ask me i've not lived a life i'm just i've only lived 19 years and out of that 19 years i've only known god for like, for what two mm -hmm. and in that two years he has taken me through a journey that I don't think I can ever replace with anything else. You can. Wow. I mean, that prayer is <laughs> was amazing. Prayer. I mean, I remember there was a time when uh, I prayed. Um, I said a prayer. I can remember where I was sitting in my room, and um, I prayed a prayer and I said, "God, God, I just want to give you glory. I want to glorify you. I want to glorify you." <laughs> One day, it's like the Holy Spirit just it just dawned on me. Are you? Do you know what you're asking for? <laughs> Do you really know the depth mm -hmm. of what you're asking for? Because the things, you know, that we, a lot of times we think that our lives are actually pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. when, but in reality, when, he, when you're not asking God, I want to do your will, you think you're in his will. Mm -hmm. But then when you're not saying, God, I want to do your will, the things that start to happen, you would think that your life is going upside down. But no, he's taking dominion yeah. over your life. So mm -hmm. everything that is not like him, mm -hmm. everything that represents darkness in your life, He's uprooting them, he's removing them, he's clearing mm -hmm. them. Even though to us, it's very painful. Yeah. It's a painful process. It's, it's a very painful process. But And then, you know, when you shine light into something, when some place is dark and you shine light into it, it reveals everything. Every single thing. It reveals everything. I remember the moment that I realized that, you know, I just thought I was fine. I see people that are doing deliverance, that mm -hmm. do this one, that mm -hmm. do that. I'm like, ah. Thank God, don't me. I don't have any demon, demon. inside of me. Not that I even had a demon inside mm -hmm. of me, but by this when I was going through my own, the things that the Holy Spirit was exposing, I started crying. I was like, God, I thought that I was, I didn't, I thought I was fine. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Now, you had said something earlier. I want to talk about that a little bit. You said you like to be in the know of things. So let me ask you, mm -hmm. how is that working with you in your work with God? Always wanting to know. No, no, no. <laughs> Um, you know what they call curious cats? I'm mm. um, the definition of a curious cat. They can't surprise me because I want to know what they are surprising me with. with. Right. Which is what I've learned. God is not going to tell you and he's not going to... You ask oh, God, please, so this year, what am I going to do this year? He'll just look at you. <laughs> I will show you. Let's go together. Exactly. He's not, because I've realized that if God showed us the map of our lives, mm -hmm. we would need him. No, we won't. We wouldn't need That's him true. because we already know what path we're going to take. Mm. So we wouldn't need God to guide us. Mm. We wouldn't need his light to mm. guide us because we already know what we're going to do. But being surprised by God mm. is very is is weird and it's very good at the same time. It's such an oxymoron because you're like, okay, 
I need to know what I'm going to do with my life. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, God is telling you, wait. I I know the plans I have for you, mm -hmm. but just wait. Right. I'm going to show you them, mm -hmm. but just chill. Like you can't go faster than me. I'm your God. I was the one that created you. I know what I have for you. So just wait for me to let you be. In the, I'm not going to, if I because if he told me everything I was going to do with my life, I probably wouldn't make the mistakes I made mm -hmm. that built me up. That built you up exactly. because. Mm -hmm. Knowing everything, if I knew what I had, if I knew everything I know now that I had done before, I wouldn't probably wouldn't have done them because it, it would have been like, okay, I'd have been the typical good girl, I wouldn't like skip any classes because you would know that okay, God has this in plan for like in stock for me, so I don't want to go past it. But the beauty about making mistakes is that as long as you're conscious of the fact that you've made that mistake and you're conscious of the fact that God forgives this, like. He forgives you enough to bring you back into your the plan he has for you. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't make them again. It's only someone foolish that will make the same mistake he made before. Mm -hmm. And then I expect, like, God is going to forgive you. But like, to expect him to forgive you, well, I've made it. God is going to forgive me. And then you'll not go back to it again. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense. So being in the know is like, I want to know. But at the same time, God is telling me, you don't need to know. Because if you knew, you wouldn't need me. Mm -hmm. That's true. We can't, we can't know it all. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a hard lesson. For someone like me that was very analytical, like, I want to know the next step. Like, I need to know. Even, mm -hmm. li like, literally now, when, we're, when I'm driving, someone is telling me where to go. I'm like, I'm like, um, I need to know ahead of time mm -hmm. where I'm going to turn yeah. so that I don't miss the turning. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's not always like that with God. There are times, though, when, yes, God will reveal things to you mm -hmm. to prepare because he knows what it is that is going to how that could affect you or just to prepare you so that it doesn't um, cause a, a great disaster. But I like what you said. You said, you know, the things that we go through, even in the process of him taking us there, like Joseph. Mm -hmm. Joseph, he took Joseph. He saw, he had a dream when he was younger that he was going to, you know, be like this high person, this star ruling and then his, his family, his brothers were bound to him and his parents. But it took 13 years mm -hmm. and not just ordinary 13 years, 13 years in prison, slavery, his brothers betrayed him, mm -hmm. slavery, and then he was accused of something he did not do. And then, you know, eventually, even though the person that he helped in the prison said they would remember, they didn't remember him. Mm -hmm. It took years of God working in him, trying and testing his heart before he then became the prime minister. But in that process, God grew him. And that's, the, that's a good way for us to see all of our challenges, all of our difficulties, the process that God is taking us through, mm -hmm. to know that everything that he's taking us through, every season of our life is so that we can learn something. Yeah. And you know, I didn't even think about that really before, until my husband was saying something one time that, you know, we always, you know, we should always ask God, in every season of our lives, mm -hmm. always ask God, what do you want me to learn yeah. in this season? If we get so stuck in, oh, why me? Why am I going to this pity party? You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But we should always ask God, what do you want me to learn in this process? Mm -hmm. No matter the disaster, no matter the situation, always ask, what do you want me to learn? Because again, we cannot know it all. We yeah. can't. Even till the day we die, we don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Yeah, we might have an idea of what God wants to do in our lives. Or we might have an idea that God has a purpose for our lives. But, you know, we just can never know. Yeah. We just never know. Is there something that you'd like to add or say to your um, to the audience? Something you said about, you know, God, God's plan for you and everything. Mm -hmm. Nothing God does. There's no such thing as coincidence. I've right. had to learn that. Absolutely. There's no such thing as, oh, that just happened. Mm -hmm. God knows it's going to happen. Like now, for the story of Job, Job probably thought it was a coincidence that everything happened on the same day. He did not know that God was behind everything. He didn't know that the devil and God had already met on his case. Hmm. I, I said it earlier, the spiritual controls the physical. Like, you, you are going to bed. You don't, know that, you don't know the war God is fighting over your head as you are sleeping, even in your room at that time. So there's nothing as a coincidence. Everything you are going through is, a, is like a process. See, if you see everything as a process instead of a problem, hmm. you know that, you know that okay, I'm going to pass this. Because God can't give you something you can't handle. If your spiritual level is on 75%, God is not going to give you something of 150% and expect you to pass through it. Mm -hmm. He's going to give you something you can handle. And the devil might throw different things at you. Mm -hmm. But God already knows that my child can handle that. And so he's just waiting for you to come to the realization that you can handle it. Because everybody has been given... Once you're in Christ... 
you've been given the it's not that you won't go through problems you will but the only difference is as a christian as a believer as a child of god you've been given the ability to face those problems grace you've been given the power to to fight those problems head on because you know that the god you serve is not the god of disappointment the god you serve is not the god of broken promises Mm -hmm. the fact that you wake up every day means that it is a new day and you're fulfilling god's purpose the moment you start to realize that okay God has a plan for me, and you want to walk in accordance with his plan. Everything the devil throws at you is just going to be a process. Mm-hmm. Like now, this flower vase, as beautiful as it is, it went through fire. Mm-hmm. It went through hell. Like the glass, it, they had to mold it. They had to shape it. Sometimes God has to mold you. Sometimes God has to shape you. And you might not like the process. If people around you might not like the process. Mm-hmm. People might, they might not even understand the process. Mm-hmm. But God himself knows that, you know what? For her to be who I want her to be, she has to go through certain things. Mm-hmm. Job could have easily given up after his children died. Not even before he was ridden with leprosy. After his children died, he could have given up. After his wife was telling him, stop believing in God, he could have given up. But he built him up to the point where he became so strong in his faith mm-hmm. that he knew that... Though he slay me. Exactly. Yes. Like, he knew that, God, you know what, God is watching me, and the fact that I've not died, mm-hmm. the fact that I've not left the earth, does, it means that God is, is con- he knows what he's doing, mm-hmm. and I'm just going to wait for him, I'm just going to keep, if you praise God, like, I saw this quote, it says, before God opens that door, praise him in the hallway, mm-hmm. for that, before that door opens, so through your problems, if you, if you face your problems with the, an attitude of praise and thanksgiving, you don't know the door God is going to open for you. You don't know what he's going to do for you. So if you stop thinking of everything as a problem and think of it as a process, you become more accustomed to the fact that God is with you. Mm-hmm. And once he's with you, he can't leave you unless you leave him. Mm-hmm. And another thing is that you can't fight. You, you, you can't say you, you are with God and expect him. Like You can't say you are with God and then still want to be in the world. Because Doesn't God can't, that. he can't cohabitate with hatred. He can't cohabitate with lust. He can't cohabitate with immorality. Mm-hmm. You see, when Adam and Eve sinned, remember there was a part of the Bible that said God was walking with them, like physically they could see. After they sinned, God left them. Yeah, that was dumb. God, re- he said, you know what? I can't stay where sin is because light and darkness can't stay in the same place. Together. One has to overcome the other. And so you have to be conscious of you know what, I want God to live in me, so I have to deal with myself, mm-hmm. deal with my, the, the things that are in the world that are in me, for yeah, God to live in flesh. me, exactly, for God to live in me, and you have to leave those things behind if you are following him, mm-hmm. because God can't dwell in your heart if sin is in your heart, God does not share his glory, and he doesn't share his people, mm-hmm. he wants you to himself, and if he can't have you to himself, he's just going to stay in one place until you come and meet him himself, <laughs> that's right, that's just how it is. Thank you. And like she said, the best part of it is that throughout all this process, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake Mm -hmm. you. No matter where you are, be on top of a mountain, inside the deep blue ocean, in fire, whatever, through the storm. He said, I will never leave you. I will be with you. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, even as we are going through that process, not problems, but process, he's with us. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank, thank you for you. having me. I had fun. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And thank you. I hope that you have learned one or two things from this episode. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. You have a fantastic day.